So despite may having a bigger four day preview sales than saying C, the Eternals is doing abysmally. I'm not surprised whatsoever that this movie is the lowest of the MCU openings. I think anybody that is normal would, yeah, nobody cares about the Eternals. The Eternals did worse than Saint C, which Saint C opened on a. Which again, Saint C opened on a Labor Day weekend. And November is usually a pretty good month for movies. There's usually like two or three massive openings in November. I won't be surprised that Ghostbusters Afterlife opens north for 50 million. And Santa opens north for 50 million. I think The Matrix is going to probably open north for 80 million. Or 70, 80 million people. And of course, Spider Man No Way Home might likely gross on north of like 130 to 140 million. But this is The Eternals. Okay? I always knew this would be one of the more underperforming of Marvel movies. This movie is doing abysmally legs wise. Okay? This is the first week's of box office. It is performed like another Marvel movie called Black Widow that came out months ago. During when the Delta variant started, day to day streaming, which often impacts box office in a negative way. Which again, the Phantom Mass, of course, ignores that. And we don't have to go over Black Widow again because the Phantom Mass will try to spin everything into their narrative. But the Eternals, okay. Doesn't have all those issues going against it. Doesn't have day to day streaming like Black Widow did. It didn't have the Delta variant surging in the US as well. And this is Black Widow versus the Eternals. Black Widow is doing better than the Eternals. Yep, it is doing better. And it's performing similarly on its second and third weekend. And yeah, Venom didn't really have good legs either. You know, which is a movie that the Phantom Mass praised, of course. But of course, the only Phantom Mass are going to spend this, oh, it's going to roll its openings, blah, blah, blah. We don't, I don't really care what they think, you know. But this is just put, if this, if this, if this movie continues to do horribly over the next weeks, then yeah, most of the reviews on IMDb, most of the reviews on Letterboxd, Metacritic, and IMDb are paid and bought for by Disney. It was the same thing with Cruella. There were a lot of paid and baffle reviews on IMDb. Same thing with Captain Marvel. Same thing with even as far back as The Last Jedi. I highly doubt a movie as decisive as The Last Jedi has a 6.9 on IMDb. That's more than movies that a lot of fans actually like. That's more than like, you know, Sonic that got and stuff. And, you know... Movies that are more decisive usually have like a 5.6 or a 5.7. But of course, Disney's going to rig the IMDb scores to give them good scores. And we all know Rotten Tomatoes is already bought and paid for by Disney. And we have known that ever since then. They have gone far and far aims to protect Captain Marvel. Metacritic went, far, went in aims to protect The Last of Us Part 2. IMDb will of course sell for every Disney movie we've seen, giving every Disney movie I want to create the same score. So Disney movies don't get un- too much scrutiny. Disney can't get bad reviews because we don't want to hurt Disney's image. We don't want to tarnish their image. It's absolutely ridiculous at this point. Now go for the Returnals reviews later and why they are why a lot of them are fake because the movie went from like. Lower than Justice League and Suicide Squad to above for the Dark World and Captain Marvel overnight. Overnight. It went from that. And a lot of people are saying that the Eternals is boring, the Eternal sucks, the Eternal is garbage. But of course you have all the bots, all the Disney bots willing to come out and defend this movie. The movie had the same cinema score as Batman vs. Superman. That's all I have to really tell you about the Eternals. No, really. And sadly, this will probably be one of the highest grossing movies of the year because of the pandemic. Mick, sadly, it will be. The, the, it will likely end up around 160 to 170 million dollars. But look at Black Widow. This movie will end up grossing similar to F9, the Fast Saga, 
which I know Marvel fans don't want to hear, and especially, you know, Twitter, which loves the Eternals. They cracked up at the greatest movie ever made. Made. But if you look at my, even my, like, video data, there is no real hype for the Eternals. I've been saying this for the longest time. If there's no real hype for a movie, no one's going to watch it. No one's going to care. There's no real hype for the Eternals. That hype didn't exist. And I've been saying this since the first trailer came out. I didn't want to see it. I have no interest in seeing the Eternals. I'm, I'm going to get saying Z when it comes out on Blu-ray. I got Black Widow. But I don't want to see the Eternals. I don't want to get the Eternals. It just sounds like I'm just going to be wasting my time watching a pile of shit on the TV. Okay? And I don't want to dedicate this whole video to the Eternals. But it really depends on how a second weekend does. But all we have to do is look at other big, massive releases. Venom Let the Beaconids, Suicide Squad, Black Widow, Space Jam A New Legacy, F9, The Fast Saga. All of these movies drop the same percentage-wise, okay? And a lot of them had, of course, fandom as involvement. A lot of them were decisive. And a lot of them were just out right here, i.e. Space Jam A New Legacy. Snake Eyes also dropped a lot as well. Snake Eyes is another one, one that dropped a lot, okay? Movies then don't really have, and of course Halloween Kills dropped massively too, okay? And basically it's more the war, it basically did far worse than the original reboot, okay? This movie is likely going to drop 67 to 68%, like Venom did, like, you know, Suicide Squad, and like, and like Black Widow did, I'm calling it right now, it's going to drop 70%, 68%, 69%. Even Dune, a movie that was relatively well praised, was to get to Dune Raider, dropped. 60%, 67%, okay, Suicide Squad as well, and that's mostly due to day-to-day -day streaming, that's not really because of the film's quality, and again, the Phantom Mass, so of course, you know, use their excuses, oh, superhero movies are dying, but then they'll go on and praise Venom Rather Reconnets, and call it a masterpiece, basically, that's what they essentially did, they'll probably criticize No Way, no Way Home, wouldn't be surprised, but yeah, we're done talking about the Eternals, the waste of time. The waste of my time. The Eternals is going to be a box office failure in the making. This movie has a $200 million budget. And this movie is underperforming Black Widow. Okay. And Black Widow couldn't even make $400 million. And this movie had the same legs as Black Widow. Well, <laughs> it's going to lose money. Black Widow didn't lose money because they got money from Disney+. Plus. But the Eternals doesn't have Disney+. Plus. The Eternals will be... I'm calling it right now, will be the MCU's first official box office failure. The first official box office failure where they don't have anything else to back up the Eternals. They don't have Disney Plus to back up the Eternals. So, overall, this movie, because of lack of interest, because it's a pile of garbage, and because Dizzy is, it's, it's funny how Dizzy and, uh, and Twitter are trying to do everything they can to save this movie. And it's not going to work. I can't wait for the articles to come out about people are racist because they don't want to see the Eternals. People are sexist because they don't want to see the Eternals. Because people can't have their own mind these days. People have to adhere to Twitter or else. And, like, and the fandom answer isn't that much better. When a movie they don't like does well, they'll say the same old, same old. Okay? Both sides of it is absolutely insane, okay? Both are part of toxic fandom, okay? Neutral fandom is what it is, okay? I try to be neutral. I try to be unbiased, okay? Which is why I defend movies like Black Widow and stuff. Because I don't think it deserves the unnecessary hate that I got from the fandom menace. But the Eternals, there's really nothing to say good about. And you can you say, oh, but Bo Bo's critics was, Okay? Even the critics didn't like the Eternals. It's a lowest rated Marvel movie in history. 48%. And because Disney was probably panicking by the Marvel scores, they probably have 
bought an army of bots because Disney has billions of dollars, let's not forget, to give positive review scores on every site. They did it with Cruella as well, and they did it with other movies. And we all know Ron Tomatoes is Ron paid for, everybody knows that. But yeah, we're done with the Eternals. Ten minutes. Yep. Number two is Dune. This is getting a sequel, no matter what, and this movie has passed the threshold. It needs to make money. So, Dune is overall a success. And then whatever I made out on HBO Max as well. And in fact, it's already getting a sequel. Which I think is, why didn't Arena get a sequel? But this is getting a sequel. Nobody knows. But, yeah. Dune's getting a sequel. I'm very glad it is. Because everybody's saying this movie is amazing. This movie is one of the best of the year. I wouldn't be surprised if this is nominated for Oscars. You know, and stuff. And, yeah, that's about Dune. $340 million worldwide. If this is a nominated for Oscars, we own the Oscars now dead for sure. Because Dune is, is going to be on the Oscars then. <laughs> you okay? Dune should be on the Oscars. Next is No Time to Die. This movie has made $667 million. But the fandom ass will tell you that this movie is an absolute failure. Okay? James Bond has never been an American popular character. It's always been about... The international box office. They'll say, oh my god, the movie's losing money. Okay? This is the international box office right here. $524 million. Okay? $525 million. Look at the, the UK. Okay? In the UK, it passed Endgame. No time to die did. It literally passed Endgame. Okay? In the UK. And in Europe, it did pretty well. It massively overperformed in places like the Netherlands. It did well, okay in South Korea. It did okay in Russia. But it did, the second, I think the first, and in China, it did worse in China than it did in Germany. <laughs> what is the funny thing? It did worse in China than it did in Germany. Okay. And this is the entire box I was here. Here. And really well in Switzerland too. So yeah, No Time to Die has done pretty well. I don't the Phantom Mass will try to spend their narratives again. But yep, next is Venom to be Connards. Four hundred twenty four million dollars. And it's going to pass $200 million domestically. I think everybody has saw of that. It is, have, it is starting to rebound in terms of rigs. But we really won't go back into the green. Okay. There's a movie that saw past $200 million already. But we'll likely pass $200 million. Be, you know, next week. Again. I, it'll probably up around $205, $207 million worth domestically. Which isn't pretty good. But again, it's all right for an October release. No one was expecting this movie to do this well. 90 million opening. Everybody was expecting a 60 to 70 million dollar opening, but it made 90 million. Which is why I expect Go I expect Ghostbusters Afterlife to overperform. I actually expect that movie to overperform. Next is Ron's Gone Wrong, which is having wigs. <laughs> That's the only good thing about it. It's having wigs, so this movie. Again, Clifford's coming out next week, which might damage this movie's box office potential. But this movie is having wigs. That's it. That's the only don't worry thing about Ron's Gone Wrong. It's having okayest wigs. Maybe this movie might get a call following or something in the future. But other than that, yeah, it's toast. Okay. Friends Dispatch, which a lot of people are angry at me for some reason. You know, I about my Blu ray video, a lot of people like you were like. Yeah, they don't like it. I don't know why, but... $15 million worldwide. It has made $8 million domestic. I'm surprised this movie's doing this well. Considering it's an indie movie. But, yeah, it's doing okay for an indie movie. It's played really well for an indie movie. So, $15 million is pretty well for a lower budget indie movie. Halloween Kills dropped 73%. <laughs> Ooh. This movie is not gonna pass ninety. It's gonna barely pass. It's gonna be around ninety three million dollars. I said it might wake out to a hundred million, but this is this is abysmal. 
Dune's gonna pass this, and that opened lower than Halloween Kills. <laughs> and then Free Guy opened way earlier this year, and they had fast Halloween Kills too. Oh my God, this movie's doing a biz movie at the box office. It is doing a biz movie at the box office. It has still made money because it has a really small budget, but it's still doing a biz movie. So. Next is Ant Wars. Uh, yeah, no one wants to see this movie essentially. It's, I think it's a world budget movie too. But yeah. <laughs> Next is Last Night in Soho, a movie that was hyped up by everyone online and no one saw. And then I predicted it would flop, and it did flop. <laughs> this movie's doing a biz. It's doing okay ratings wise, but it's still a flop. Next is Am's Family 2. Yeah, this movie's doing alright still. It's no longer Halloween, so this movie's probably not going to do much more. But it's doing pretty well. It has like a $40 million, $20 to $30 million budget, and it has made money. Next is the Sing Seas of the world. Uh, Sing C has made $418 million at the box office. And this is still doing, it's not really doing, it's in the world part of the race, but even then, it performed like movies like Doctor Strange. <laughs> this movie basically performed domestically like Doctor Strange did. As well, so Free Guy is still in feeders. I'm surprised. Jungle Cruise is too. I'm surprised both movies are still in feeders. And the last duel, which is basically a big, big, massive box office failure. Yeah, this movie is a big, massive box office turd. Like Dear Evan Henson and like Last Night at Soho. So. And the Phantom Man is saying this movie flopped because of feminism. No, this movie flopped because nobody wants to watch this garbage. It's Last Duel is probably garbage. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. It's made by Disney, first of all. So, <laughs> you know, you already know it's going to be bad. But, you know, I will but, but like the IMDb score, like all the scores are pretty good for this movie. So it might become like a cult following movie. But other than that, this movie is a failure. Essentially, let's be like the next 47 Ronin. You know, I think this movie probably watched more than 47 Ronin. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised at the slightest because this is just incompetency at the slightest at Disney. So, that's basically it about this video. Goodbye.